Okay guys, welcome to uh, another They Did What? And this week we look at a very, very, very British uh, software company, Microgen. Now, Microgen, um, they were based in Bracknell, down in England, um, in Berkshire. They produced games for the home computers in the early mid-80s. The company was formed by Mike Meek and Andrew Laurie in 1981. Um, in order to capitalise on the growing boom that was microcomputers in the home. The company had a solid reputation but became very, very prominent with its series of games featuring a chap called Wally Week uh, and his various uh, family members. All of these games got excellent reviews um, over most of the platforms that they were released on, including the C64, Spectrum and uh, Amstrad. Um, later, unfortunately, the company, well, sorry, the company invested £130,000 in producing the Micro Plus. Now, this was basically a hardware add-on um, to try and give the Spectrum more uh, memory. Um, it gave a total of 64k of memory. Unfortunately, there was only one game that actually supported it, and that was called Shadow of the Unicorn. The company... Um, sadly was bought over by Creative Sparks in 1987 which subsequently went into receivership. So yeah, they were a very kind of short-lived company. I mean they were very much a game in the boom of the home computer era. Um, they made some fantastic games which we're about to see. Um, their most prominent one was this one. Well, the first main one you can see there, Automania. Um, you basically played the part of a sort of character who had to try and build a car. That was released in the Spectrum and definitely the Commodore 64. Um, their probably most famous game would be Everyone's a Wally, where the uh, you basically there was Wally Week and his various family members, and I think you had to try and get to a bank and get some money, something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, I don't recall if they made any mach any games for the 16-bit machines. I can't really remember to be honest with you. But anyway, let's uh, let's stop this now, and we shall go and reminisce with a one teary eye. Okay, then this is uh, what seems to be one of their earliest games. Uh, this is called Star Trek. Now, Star Trek was. Uh, a game that seemed to appear on pretty much every micro back in the day, obviously because Star Trek was still fairly popular and it was all very science fiction-y, so there was a lot of Star Trek games released. Um, and this is on the Spectrum, so let's see how we start here, I have no idea how to play this game. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Battle Zone Sirius, let's go for yes. Please wait a moment, right? I'm guessing this is probably written in basic, if it's telling us to wait. A fleet of 22 Klingon ships with three Klingon bases have invaded Sirius. You have 57 star years to destroy these Klingons before Sirius is destroyed. Three star bases have been sent to assist you on your mission. Good luck. Press any key to start. Right, okay, so on the left. Oops, we appear to be getting attacked instantly. Right, it's on the left we've got some sort of map. It actually looks like some uh, TIE Fighters. Oops, alright, okay, so... <coughs> right, so you need to type in commands. What the hell? What? Klingon Photon Torpedo. Photon Tube 2 hours has been, has been damaged. Subspace Droid. Has been damaged. Two Klingons entered quadrant command. Well, I've got no idea. North, south. Oh, I've got no idea what I'm doing here. Apparently, the status is red, and it looks like I'm taking a kick in here. Bloody hell! Impulse engines have been damaged. Did it be right? I've no idea if we can move. It seems to be. You just enter commands using the keyboard, but given I don't have the instructions or anything, I've got no idea what I'm actually supposed to be doing here. So I think we'll skip on. That is the mighty Star Trek, and that was released in 1982, 1983, I think it was, on the ZX Spectrum. Okay, this is another uh, Spectrum release. This was in 1983. This is called 
Galaxio. Galaxio. Um, I am guessing it's going to be a Galaxian um, spin. However, I was wrong with Knockout. I thought that was going to be a boxing game and it turned, into, turned out to be some pish basic game um, where you throw a, a ball or whatever it was. It was more like sort of a mini golf. Anyway, press J to use Microgen Joysticks. Microgen Joysticks? Oh, I've got no idea what they're talking about. Well, this is... This is not a microgen joystick that I've got, so I'm going to have to go for keyboard and probably have no idea how to play it. Ah, here we go, right. Okay, press 1 for one player game. 2, 4 and 0. This was released in 1983 and this is on the spectrum. So, 2, 4 and 0. Right, okay. It's, uh, yep, it's Galaxian. There's not a lot of animation going on here. And if I didn't know better, it was written in basic. Well, possibly not, because it's quite quick. But this was, uh, back in the time when Copyright did not exist. If somebody brought out a good game, you could just bring out your own game and rip the shit out of it and make lots of money in the process. Nowadays, you do something like that, you would get your arse sued. Right, okay, I don't think we really need to look at that one any longer. That is Galaxio. Nothing like Galaxian. Uh, and that is on the spectrum. Okay, following Star Trek, we have the mighty Knockout. It's actually, I think you need to have one of these uh, ability to see stereograms with your eyes to actually read and make out that that says knockout. If you didn't, if you were uh, colour blind, you may not be able to read that. Now, it looks very basic like, quite literally. It's classed as an arcade game, so let's press Y to continue. Instructions, hell yeah, why not? Knockout is a game for one to two players. Each player will be asked to input his name and then a coloured ball will be assigned to that player. <laughs> Sounds exciting already. Each player plays one ball in turn. After each player has played four balls, a frame has been completed. You can play up to nine frames. Knockout? I have no idea. what is this going to be a ten pin bowling game? I thought it was going to be a boxing game actually. Let's just batter on. Oh, good lord. It looks like a a site plan for a building with stairs. The idea of the game is to try and get your ball into the sections formed by the green dividing lines. Right, okay. See guys, this is what we had to play back in 1983. You think uh, stuff like Halo and all that was all you had? No, 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 this is where it started. Pish like this. Ignoring the triangular shape, the first section scores 10, the second 20, then 40, 80 and 160. The yellow band is out of play, this scores no points. All other parts of playing area score no points. Good lord. Right, during play it is possible to be knocked into a higher scoring zone. Oh, let's just bar on. Before each ball is played, the starting position, yeah, whatever. Right. <laughs> Let's go for one player. <laughs> I've lost a will to live already. Well, we're going to have to go for Mimeo. Colour of ball, well, it's given me a blue ball. Let's just go for one frame. Thank you very much. Is everything okay? I love how basic games always ask you to confirm. Good lord, right. Enter starting position. Use keys 6 and 7. Let's just go right in the middle. Okay, enter. Space. Use keys, right. We've done that. How do we actually... Space. It's not telling us how we actually throw the ball or whatever it is. We're going to move down. Enter. Come on, it's not telling me how to do it. So I'll just I'll do what every games player would do in this position. I would run my fingers. Ah so you press Y apparently. Direction. No idea. 
Why? Hard hardness. Who are misses? Why? <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> if this is not one of the worst games I've ever played, I don't know what is. Ah, oh, we you go. You can just piss right off. Right, let's go for another game. Yes, direction. I don't know how to change the direction. No idea. So it's going to go straight up. Up to the uh, northwest. Let's just go again. Yes, hardness. Well, I don't know how to change it, so we're going to have to go for it. Yes, and it's going to go in exactly the same place. <laughs> yeah. I was, now I'm wondering why this game was never ported for the uh, the PS4. Right, okay, that's... Uh, what is that called? That is called Knockout, and that was released by uh, in 1983 by Microgen. Not one of their better games, I'd have to say. Oh, and yeah, and that was on the Spectrum. Okay, right, this is probably their best game, their most notable game, and um, the game they're most famous for. Is there any other superlatives I can use? Probably not. Yeah, this is Everyone's a Wally. Now, let's see, I think it's a Kemp's and Joystick. Just need to bear with me a wee second while I try and get this emulator thing working. Number four, is that going to do anything? It certainly does. Right, now, this game... You play, I think you can actually change who you're going to be. You can see here I'm at the top, I am playing the part of Wally, who is a, the central character. Now, annoyingly, you've got um, your other me family members. When you walk past them, they actually drain energy from you, which is a bit bizarre, if you ask me. Um, the graphics were really, really, really nice. I mean, this was probably the nicest sort of looking microgen game really kind of sharp. I mean, yeah, there's a bit of colour clash going on there, but there was very, you know, very colourful uh, graphics. Now, this game was quintessentially British, you know, things like post office, telephone boxes, and it's very much a product of 1980s uh, Britain, you know, flat caps, although probably that was slightly before the 1980s, uh, a punk rocker, can't remember what he was called, you can see here, he's got the big Mohican. Um, you've got a hippie somewhere. Now, I never really played this game. I could never quite get into it. But it's the idea, it's a graphic adventure. The idea being you've got to pick up, you can see there at the top left, I've got an oil can which is empty. I've got fuse wire. Now, the idea is you've got to pick up various bits and pieces and plonk it down somewhere else which will open stuff and let you pick up other things. So it's like take A to B, then click C and take it to D and vice versa. But I could never really get into it. Oh, there's, I'm calling him Vivian, I don't know what, he's, what his name is now. Alright, so if you press the number at the top it tells you, press the number 2 it tells you Wilma is in the park. Can you swap to Wilma? I thought you could, you know that. Maybe you can't. Can you? Something tells me you could actually swap characters. I'm sure you could. Dick is in a wobbly park. But it was fully, really, you know, unique graphics. Um, really, really pretty to look at. I'm sure if they made this game now with the... the, 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 the knowledge that they have a colour clash, there wouldn't be any colour clash. But it was really, really nice. I always felt that these games were... Um, typically Spectrum. Um, I mean, they did come out in the C64, and that's the system I obviously played them on. But I always felt that their spiritual home was on the Spectrum. Ah, bollocks. I think to really get anywhere in games like this, you had to sort of map them. So you could see exactly where you were going and where you've been. Right, it looks like I'm getting nowhere here, and that's what I'm just going to go back the way. But I'm sure you can change characters. Now, I know I really should probably do a bit of research before I make these games, but you know me by now, I just tend to put them on and just wing it. I mean, music's non-existent, sounds minimal, you've got the little noise I'm jumping and sort of walking. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, this game could never be what the hell's that? This game could never be anything other than made in Britain. ER, you know, there's the little uh, the letterbox. Now, if you get to like, any opening, you can press forwards and that then takes you into the screen, or in this case, into a building. Notice this, is it? I was going to say a gym. No, it's not a gym. So I've now picked up the test tube. So what you've really got to do is use a bit of logic, but I was never... I never really had the patience for these kind of games. But I can really appreciate the graphics. It was stuff like this that really made the Spectrum interesting. Not, not just the Spectrum made the, the UK industry interesting. When others were playing things like Galaxian and what have you, um, you know, we were playing stuff like this and, you know, some of you made me looking at this thinking it looks rubbish, but, uh, you know, it was, there were more thinking. You had to think about it. Now there's, is that, there's a hippie on the left, he's just disappeared. Ah. <laughs> there you go, I've just walked into some flames and died. Anyway, listen, that is, everyone's a wally. Let's say uh, batter one. And that was on the ZX Spectrum, and it was released in 1985, by the way. Okay, this is uh, The Witch's Cauldron, um, and this was on the ZX Spectrum. Now, it looks awful like a text adventure. This was released in 1985. The Witch's Cauldron, the evil witch Hazel has turned you into a toad and imprisoned you in her lair on the island of Mulvane. You have not seen her for several days, but Mock Tupers, Hazel's mad assistant, appears every so often like a bad penny. You must find the spells and make the potions necessary for the various metamorphoses that will eventually bring you back to the human race. Right, okay, you are under the piano. The piano lid is open, the north door is locked. Open door. You can't in your present form. Right, okay, looking at the screen, I appear to be a frog. So how do we... Can we unlock a door? You can't in your present form. So what am I supposed to do? Can I go north? You can't. Can I go south? Right, apparently you can. You're under the couch. East is a gap between the couch and the wall. Well, let's go east then. Head east, young man. You're behind the couch. Here is a mouse hole. Here's a bottle of whiskey. Take whiskey. You can't in your present form look in mirror. Yeah, these kind of games um, were very, very popular in the mid 80s. In the mirror you see yourself, in the future is a cat, underneath is a word, tacky sup. Tacky sup. Ah, now if you look at that backwards it says pussycat. Let's try typing pussycat. Wit. Try nice. Oh, nice pussycat, possibly. Try nice. I've got no idea. Pardon? Alright, <laughs> I've got no idea. Let's try and head east. Right, you're in a mouse hole. You're caught in a mouse trap. Here is a snail's shell, a mouse trap. Open trap. You can't in your present form. Right, this game is getting rather frustrating. That's probably why I never had the patience to actually play any of these type of games. But that's uh, that game is uh, The Witch's Cauldron and it was released in 1985 on the Spectrum. Okay, this is a Scramble. They didn't even make any attempt to change the name. They just used the proper name. Yep, this was also released on the Spectrum in 19, sorry, 1983. P to start F. The, 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 does it tell you about the keyboard? Change for I've got no idea. Let's just bar on. 
Is it one? How do we start? Change speed, space. All right, I've got no idea. Right, what, P. Ah, of course, it's P to start. Why didn't I know that? Good lord. <laughs> I don't appear to be controlling anything. Oh, I tell a lie. I've just managed to fire something. Or was that when I died, I think? Now, do not adjust your TV sets. It is flickering like hell. I think it's uh, safe to say this game is written basic. I have got absolutely no idea how we actually control this thing. It certainly doesn't use the joystick, that's for sure. And I can't feel life of me. Oh, hang on. Cursor keys, well done. Enter name maximum nine letters. Well, let's go for meme. It's game over. Right, P to start, which is obviously. Right, I've managed to suss out how to move left and right. And it appears to automatically fire. But yep, it is flickering like nothing on earth. And it's rather abysmal. So anyway, yep, that was the mighty scramble. And that again, that was on the ZX Spectrum, released in 1983. Okay, this is stainless steel. With a rather dodgy looking boy George lookalike with a large gun. Driving what looks like a sort of a, a Ferrari. And some 1980s looking bird in the background. This was released in 1986. So let's see if we can start the game. It certainly looks slightly more advanced from some of the, the earlier games that we've been looking at. Press a key. Right. It's funny, that noise seemed to be very popular when it came to explosions in the spectrum. I don't know what was going on there. Okay, B. Right, how do we start? Bloody hell, you need to be able to read that. Against an onslaught of android troops controlled by the infamous Dr. Vardos, his twin but booster hyper alloy combat chassis cleaned out of the... Right, how do we start it? If in doubt, press space. Ah! Now, here's a, here's a little bit of information for you. Trivia. The person that wrote this game is a certain Mr. Dave Perry, who went on to write uh, the... Earth Germ, sorry, Earthworm Gym Games and many other games. He also wrote one called uh, on the PC, not Cherub, I can't remember what it was called. But Dave Perry is very successful now and he actually started with Microgen. So there you go. Press a key. Press fire to start. What well, doesn't like that? Press fire to start. Doesn't like that. Select level, easy peasy. Right, ah, so you're controlling what looks like some kind of ro 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 robot type thing. Let's pick up fuel. I'm trying to see the significance. Ah, right, I get you. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm actually the little, uh... I'm the little character at the far right of the screen. So you can actually see what's kind of coming. I'm going to say this is actually... Oh, bollocks. It's, uh, it's not bollocks, I mean to say it's actually quite nice. Um, <laughs> if, if very unforgiving. So you can see there, I've got quite a bit of time before I actually get to any enemies. Can I shoot these? I don't think I can. Right, so there's going to be something coming up. Very soon, right now. How do I get past this? Ah, right, okay, I've got to go around it. That's how I do it. Yeah, this is actually really, really nice. It's got nice kind of graphics. Um, sounds not too bad. And it's actually pretty playable as well. 
So it's uh, it's no surprise to see that Mr. Perry went on to bigger and better things with his life. But you know, this is this is I mean, this is exactly the reason why Gate Spectrum or computers like the Spectrum, all the other home computers were vital because these are the the computers, these are the machines that all the guys that we know nowadays cut their teeth on. If it wasn't for machines like this, we simply would not have half the the sort of talent, the gaming talent that we've got now. These are the machines that these guys cut their teeth on. I've never even heard of this game, I must admit. Never heard of it. You can probably tell the predominant amount of games by Michael J and CMT on the spectrum, that was just their, sort of their, their computer of choice. Right, how am I going to get around here? Because I can't... Ah, oh, bollocks! Am I at the end of the level, possibly? I'm not too sure. Anyway, listen, that's actually quite a good game, that. That's a stainless steel. I see that was written by Dave Perry. Air Forum Jim uh, fame, and it was written in 1986 on the ZX Spectrum. Okay, this is a uh, Automania, and this is on the Commodore 64. This was also released on the Spectrum, and possibly the Amstrad, although I'm not too sure. It was released in 1984. Now, it's probably got about the, the most annoying music of any game I've ever played, because it just repeats itself over and over and over again. I think you can skip the music. Music off. Whew. Yep, okay, right. Joystick. Three. Return to start. And it's not working. Let's see, is it going to work now? There we go. Now, the idea of this game, you play again the part of Wally. And the idea is you've got to collect parts for your car. Why won't it pick up? Have you got to pick up in a certain order? Hmm, not too sure. Maybe you have to pick up in a certain order. Right, okay, you just walk over them. So yeah, what you need to do here is you pick up a part of your car and then you've got to deposit it on the next screen. It's quite a slow game, but it's actually quite... <laughs> it's very un unforgiving as well. You even feather a body and it's game over, or it's instant death. <laughs> Bollocks! I did quite enjoy playing this game on my Commodore 64. Even though it was brutally hard. Hang on. Is that a different screen? <laughs> right, that's the screen you need to actually put the car parts in. So. Now, I don't think I ever got beyond about three or four parts. Ah, damn it. But I always felt. These games, I don't know, don't know what it is. I think because it went for, can you, the, the sprites were always a single colour. Mainly because most of the games came out in the Spectrum. They were always developed first for the Spectrum. Am I going to die here? Yep. Um, when they appeared in the Commodore 64, they just looked a bit rubbish. They just didn't look properly. You know, they didn't look right, um, if that makes any sense. I mean, the Commodore, normally you would have multi-colour sprites, and having single-colour sprites like this just looks... it just looks wrong. So, I would suggest, if you're going to play any of the games that I show you in this, uh, oh, bloody hell, in this feature, play them on a Spectrum, because they were written for the Spectrum, and they just look a whole lot better. They look suited to that system, if that makes any sense. 
one of the first things you need to get used to in a game like this is the game mechanics. You need to know what you can and cannot do. So for example, you can't just walk off there like what I thought you could maybe do. I think if I get even one part... Oh, bollocks. I'll be doing quite well. That blue thing's going to come chasing me a second, and here we go. Right, balls. I'm thinking I should really be... Ah, oh, crap. That thing's going to be right beside me, is it? No, it's not. Right, okay. Right, with any luck I shall successfully deposit one part of the car. Sound is minimal, as you can probably tell. Why couldn't I deposit that piece of the car? I've got no idea why I couldn't do that. But yeah, that's uh, that's Automania. It is a, a fun little game, as I said. It's, I would say it plays better. Uh, it does pain me to say that because I'm a Commodore 64 man through and through. Um, I would say it definitely pay, plays better on the spectrum of these games. Yeah, let's uh, crack on, guys. That's Automania, and I see that came out in 1984, and that's a Commodore 64 version. Okay, this is probably my favourite uh, microgen game. This is Pajama Rama. And this is the Spectrum one. Now, I was looking at... Uh, what did we look at? I looked at Automania on the Commodore 64, and I've got to say, the Commodore 64, it just looks... The games, because the, all the, the sprites for these games were single colour, they just look wrong on the C64. On the Spectrum, they seem to look a lot more vibrant and, you know, bright and colourful, so... I'm really going to just look at Spectrum games, I think. Or look at them on the Spectrum because I just think they look far, far better. So yeah, this is Pajama Rama. Let's see how we start this game. Um, Kemp's and Joystick, I think. Enter to start. Now, the idea is you play the part of Wally once again. And he's basically had a nightmare. And this is you in his nightmare. And what he's got to do is wake up. Now, the, the way you achieve that is by picking up various bits and pieces. Um, you can see there at the top right, I've got a pop plan and I've got a round key. And what you've got to try and do, oh, damn it, is not die, is uh, basically take items to a certain area swap it over for something else and then eventually you'll uh, hopefully complete whoops <laughs> hopefully you'll complete the game now I did I complete this? I don't think I did, I think I got almost to the end on the Commodore 64 but I never quite got there but I loved this game, I really did um, it's just fully some really really nice uh, Nice uh, ideas, you know, the graphics looked excellent. And it's also got some mean little uh, sub-games that you can see there. Whoops, bollocks, that is you, that is you looking at yourself in bed. He appears to have a baseball cap on, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Now I've now got the joystick. Now is it this level? Here we go, video games, and you see here this particular level is the upside down level. Video games, I love this. <laughs> yeah. You can play an excellent take on Space Invaders. I mean, this... I can remember seeing this at the time thinking, that's amazing, because, you know, back then, we were used to, you know, games running in, like, 30 odd K, and, you know, you either got a Space Invaders game or you got something else, but to have, like, a... A sort of a, a full, you know, to have a, 
a game like this within another game just seemed pretty mental and I spent quite a bit of time just playing this game it's actually quite a good version of Space Invaders believe it or not smooth movement, some real mental kind of sprites but it's excellent fun, it really was I don't quite know what happened when you got to the end ah there you go, you got different graphics so there was always the, the sort of uh, you wanted to see what was on the next screen again this is another one of these games you've really got to uh, you've got to map it that's game over so yeah that is Pajama Rama and that was on the Spectrum that was released in 1984 okay this is Herbert's Dummy Run now this was a sort of a spin off um, Herbert was Wally's little uh, little baby let's press any key to continue press any key apart from a space it would appear Right, Kemp's and Joystick for start game. Now this was basically following the same formula as the games that had gone before, which was like everyone's a Wally, Pajama Rama, <coughs> excuse me, even Automania, whereby you had to collect items and then drop it. Now I've never ever really played this game at all. It's probably got more bloody hell. It's probably got more in common with Pajama Rama. But excellent graphics, you know, the detail in the graphics was just brilliant, I always thought. Real fun games to play, and they're really sort of period games, you know, if you just look at the stuff that's in the games, big sort of like ghetto blasters and stereos and music systems, I mean, people, anyone, well, oh, here we go, we've even got a wee Space Invaders game as well. So yeah, it was kind of using the same formula as Pajama Rama. But if you like this kind of game, then you'd be in absolute in heaven with, with this one, you know, I mean, it's sticking to the same tried and tested formula. In fact, I would almost describe this as a bullet hell shooter. Yeah, anyway, you don't really want to see... Let's have a look at a bit more of the game. Can we go out here? Oh, you can't appear to. Now, I'm not quite sure of the idea of this, this, uh, this game was. Pajama Rama, you had to basically wake up. This one, I'm really not quite sure what the idea was. But you can see there, oops, you pick up items. You can hold two items at once. Right, I've already been up there, so what I need to do is now go up the stairs if I can. Oops. But they're quite slow paced, so it was. Although they were arcadey, there was a lot of thinking went on as well in the games. You know, it's not, I wouldn't say it was difficult as such, but you know, you certainly had to think about, you know, tennis racket, where would a tennis racket go? I'm also getting my arse booted severely. Is that a lift? I think it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've never ever seen this level before. So yeah, although they were like kind of sideways scrolling collect them ups, they always had a lot of originality and a lot of nice wee bits like mini games and stuff like this. Right, I don't know where I've gone now. Ah, does that mean just going back to the start? It looks like I have. Yeah, I have. Right, anyway, listen, that is uh, that's Herbert's Dummy Run, guys. That was released in 1985 and that was on the ZX Spectrum. Okay, hey, this is a... Uh, this is kind of bucking the trend slightly. This is a, a sort of license game from Microgen. This is Battle of the Planets, which was based on a sort of early manga cartoon. Um, I remember watching that as a kid back in the sort of late seventies, early eighties. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, Microgen did any other license games. Well, they, they they ripped off plenty of license games like Galac or Galaxio as it was called, and uh, stuff like Scramble. But yeah, I'm guessing they probably paid some money to. The company that did Battle of the Planets, so I've got no idea what this game's about. 
This was released in 1986 on the Direct Spectrum. I think it may have also saw a release on the C64. Ah, right, so it's a sort of vector type, elite type of game. Right, Spectrum, not sorry, Spectrum, Kempson Joystick. Right, so it's a sort of a shooter type affair. Right, what am I trying to kill? Am I trying to kill this thing? It's certainly nice and quick. Right, I don't know why it's not letting me. Yep, the Spectrum was excellent at doing stuff like this. It could certainly whizz along at a fair old rate. <laughs> right, well, okay, so I've kind of... It looks like I've kind of gone into a planet. Interestingly though, I can't appear to kill anything. It looks like my points are still at zero, so I've got no idea how to actually destroy stuff. that up? Possibly? Who knows? Let's try and pick it up. But you can see there just how adapt docked with repair ship. Ah, huh? right, okay. You can see how adapt the spectrum was at doing stuff like this. Yeah, I don't know why. I can't seem to destroy anything. Don't know. It looks a bit like one of these uh, things used for curling, that curling stone. Well, ah, right, so have you got to shoot them from behind? Possibly. Right, I've got three points now anyway, which is a start. I'm guessing you can probably speed up, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. Let's dock, right, dock to the fuel ship. and you can probably take off and fly to another planet, although I'm not quite sure how to do that. Anyway, listen, that's actually quite a nice wee game. Uh, I dare say if you actually got the instructions, um, it would be quite a, a fun game to play. That was uh, Battle of the Planets, and that was on the ZX Spectrum, and that was released in 1986. Okay, this is Equinox. This was released in the Spectrum in 1986. Now, the person that wrote that, Raphael, Keckle or Seckle, whatever it is, is he not the chap that went on to do things like Cybernoid and that? I might be talking rubbish. Joysticks, four, let's go for two, number two, and start game. Oh, right, I remember this game, I can remember. I can remember seeing this. Now, yeah, this is very, this is kind of a... Uh, Cybernoidy. It's like a kind of graphic adventure, but you know, shooting things. Really nice. Really, really nice. Was it Exelon? Did he do Exelon as well, I think? Sure he did. But yeah, he really knew how to uh, how to make a sort of arcade shooter. I don't know if you have to collect things, I think you've just got to basically blast your hell out of things. It's a bit like uh, Attic Attack meets Jetpack. Right, so I've picked up something, not quite sure what I need to do with it. I wonder, is it some of these games if you... Uh, have I run out of bullets? It appears I can't shoot. 
Hmm, not sure what's going on there. But this is excellent, really impressive. It's a, you know, the sprites are all, not game over, the sprites are all monochrome, but really, really colourful looking game. Superb, let's go for one more wee game of that, I think. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah, I'm guessing I must have used up all my uh, my bullets or my ammunition. There must be something I need to do here. Right, so I'm guessing I need to take that and plonk it somewhere. Where I have got no idea. Ah, right, okay, so I've... Right, okay, I thought I was getting that right, but it looks like you can just swap anything with anything else, so... You've also got to have some sort of idea as to what you're actually swapping. But yeah, it's, it's, it's good, it's a really, really fun to play. Really colourful. I say this was released in 1986. Um, I don't know whether. Right, I can't seem to move up now, so I'm not sure what's happening there. I don't know whether it was released in any other systems apart from the Spectrum, but you know, as I've said before, the Spectrum is probably the the best system for any microgen games because they really just seem to they seem to be their sort of speciality. Anyway, listen, that's enough of that one, guys. That is excellent. Sort of Equinox. And that was in 1986 on the Spectrum. Okay, right. This is the very, very last game we're going to look at. This was, I think, the very last uh, Wally game that was ever released. This was called Three Weeks in Paradise. And you can see here, uh, or you, you did see at the bottom there, it was written by Dave Perry again. So I'm guessing it's going to be pretty good. Turn Wally's colour on and off, pause the game, turn the tune, let's kill the, kill the music I think. Right, so we want to go to number two, start game. Right, okay, so again it's very very similar to the other Wally games. I'm guessing you've got to try and collect stuff. Now right away, you can see just how gorgeous looking the graphics are. Real detailed stuff going on here. You can almost tell where the sort of busy games got their inspiration from. I'm not quite sure, is that an axe? How do you pick up things? I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts, but right, I'm guessing I don't want to. <laughs> right, okay, yep, yeah, that was pretty damn stupid. Ouch! Let's make a hasty retreat, I think. This game was released in 1985, and as I said, I think this was the last of these type of games. By then, the consumer was just wanting, we'd, we were wanting more dynamic games, we were wanting more arcade style games, um, 3D games, you know, were starting to sort of appear, and games like this just, people were wanting more. You know, and I don't think we'll ever see a return to games like this, unless, of course, you've got the indie sort of scene. Um, but, you know, these games are excellent. They're really good fun. You know, the original games were all arcade games, and arcade games are never really written. Arcade games are written to be, uh, to make money. And so they're not always, usually they're too difficult, and games end pretty quick. So they're not always the best games to actually to play at home. I wouldn't have thought you can get bored quite easily with them. Right, I'm not sure you pick up anything. So games like this, 
they lasted longer. They gave you, they gave the sort of end user something to think about. You know, you got value for money. Um, you had to invest a bit of time to try and get anywhere with them. So yeah, these were excellent games. But like I said, the people were wanting more. They were wanting more arcade style games, and you know, and these kind of games are eventually dried up. But uh, yeah, great fun. Microgen is one of the, although I was a Commodore 64 man, Microgen is probably one of my sort of fondest remembered uh, gaming companies as a kid. I just, they were quintessentially British, you know, they were a, they were a, a product of their time. Um, I don't think you'd ever get a game like this nowadays. You know, it was just stere stereotypical British sort of life. Anyway, I'm kind of just wandering about here. I don't appear to be able to pick up anything. I never claimed I'm very good at them. It doesn't stop me liking them. So anyway, guys, listen, that is it. That is the very last game I'm going to look at. I do hope you've enjoyed watching this feature. Um, please ping below in the comments if there's any particular company you would like to see featured in this uh, in this series. Um, I mean, this one was nominated. I can't remember who it was. Somebody nominated this for me, and I was quite happy to do it. I mean, there's always a million companies out there. Um, so if there's any wee obscure companies that you want featured, just pop a comment below. So yep, as usual guys, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks to any new subscribers. Thank you to all the long term subscribers. And as usual guys, thank you very very much for watching.